I'm going to go over the basic menus of the FreeSky operating system, also known as FROS. First thing you'll notice is we have four buttons right here on the right. We have a model button, system button, telemetry, this is your return button, this is your scroll wheel, and you press the center to enter. Then you notice you have a page up and page down right here on the left and a joystick. First we're going to start with system menu. Here you can select your model and you could also create a model here. Long press the enter button, select create. We're going to pick mode 2 for our region. The type is going to be an airplane. Here you could select what type of airplane, normal, flying wing, or V-tail. I'm going to select normal. Here you can enter a name. This is where you can select a voice to play every time you select the model. And here we can select an image to represent the model. You can load your own images here on your micro SD card. Go ahead and click OK, and our model is created. Next, let's go over to time. Here you can adjust your date and your time and what format you want it. Next, we have display. Here you can adjust the brightness of your display. You could also set the brightness to a dial so you can adjust it by rotating a knob. You can also adjust when you want it to go to sleep and how you want it to wake up. Here we have sound. Here we can select quiet mode and we can adjust the volume and also select the dial to represent as the volume knob. We can also add haptic feedback on all of the key, alarm, and trim sounds as well as adjust the haptic feedback strength. Here we have music. Here we can download MP3s to our micro SD card. We can also assign a knob to act as a volume switch. Here we have battery. Here we can calibrate our battery. We can set a low voltage alarm and adjust the display voltage range. Next we have stick calibration. This is where you can calibrate your sticks, pots, and switches. If this is a new unit, I would recommend running a calibration, just in case. Here we have stick direction. Here we can reverse the direction of sticks, knobs, and switches. Next we have IMU calibration. This is to calibrate the built-in accelerometer. If you calibrate this, then G-roll and G-pitch will become available in the output map. To calibrate this, go ahead and hold the transmitter as you normally would while flying a model and hit enter. Next we have S6R setup. Here you can access your S6R 3 axis stabilized receiver just like you would on a computer. Here we have update. Here you can upload firmware for your receivers onto your micro SD card. Then you can flash your receivers through the JR module pins. Last, we have info. Here you can see what firmware you're currently running on your X12. Now we'll go over the model menu. First thing you see is RF system. Here we could turn on or off our internal RF. We could also select what state we want the RF to be in. This is where we can bind to a receiver and we can perform a range check as well. Here we can select whether we want to use the internal or external antenna. Here you can select the mode, your receiver number, and your channel range. This is where you can set up your external JR module. Next we have monitor. Here you can monitor all sticks and switches. This comes in very handy when setting up a model. Next we have reverse. Here we can reverse each channel individually. We also have speed. Here you can control what speed you want each channel to be initiated. Next we have endpoint. Here we can adjust the travel and limits for each channel. 
sub trim. Here we can adjust the sub trim for each channel. Trim setup. Here we can adjust the trim rate for each trim tab. Next we have fail safe. Here we can enable a fail safe for each channel. Next we have logic switch. This is a virtual switch that can be initiated by telemetry. One example is we're going to set a custom RSSI warning. First we will edit. The first line represents the action. Here we can select less than, equal than, greater than, and, or, or, and not. So here we're going to select a less than symbol. The next line represents where you want the trigger to come from. We're going to set telemetry here. This line represents what type of telemetry you would like to trigger it. We're going to do RSSI. And this next line represents how often you want it to monitor. We want it to monitor constantly. And this last line represents the value. Here we want to set it to 43. If the RSSI goes below 43, we want it to initiate a warning. So that is logical switch. Now we need to go over to special function and set up a sound to play every time the RSSI reaches under 43. Here we click engage. Here we can select how many times we want it to play. This is the trigger. We're going to select logical switch 1. Next we have what type of warning we want to play. So let's go ahead and play a value. And we want to play the value of the RSSI. So now every time the RSSI reaches under 43, it will play the value of the RSSI. Great, let's go back to curve library. Here we can store and import curves we have saved. Next we have telemetry setup. If you have a telemetry receiver, this is where your telemetry will show up. There are up to 44 pages of different types of telemetry here. If you go over down to screen position here, you can adjust where you want these telemetries to show up on your screen. Here under general we could skip our startup screens, we can skip all of our warnings and our shutdown confirmation as well. Next we have switch warning. Here we can tell the radio what position we like our sticks at on startup. Simply long press this last stand symbol here to save the positions. Next we have trainer. This is your buddy box menu. Here you can connect two transmitters to one model for training purposes. The X12 is equipped with the Bluetooth wireless system. This means you can connect two X12s together via Bluetooth for training purposes. Here we have telemetry calibration. Here you can calibrate all your telemetry. An example we can send RSSI data to an on-screen display through an unused channel. We'll go to the next page. Here we have input map. Here we can decide what switch, stick, or knob controls what function. Here we have output map. This is where we can assign a function to each channel. Next we have rates and expo. Here we can set an exponential curve for each channel. And we can assign them to different switches as well. Next we have throttle cut. Here we can assign a switch to disengage the throttle. Now we have throttle hold. Here we can assign a switch to hold the throttle. Next we have pitch curve. 
This is for planes with variable pitch props. Here you can assign different pitch curves to different switches. Next we have throttle curve. Here you can adjust your throttle curve and assign switches for them. This is useful when having variable pitch propellers. Next we have aileron difference. Here you can adjust the reflex of your ailerons and also adjust if one of them travels more one way than the other. Next we have flap set. Here we can adjust our flaps and what sort of deflection we want out of them. Next we have aileron camber flap. Here you can assign your camber flaps to work as ailerons and still work as camber flaps. Here we have aileron brake flap. Here you can assign your brake flaps to work as ailerons and still work as brake flaps. Next we have brake flap and camber flap mixer. Here we can mix our brake flap to our camber flap. Next we have aileron to rudder mix. Here you can mix your aileron with your rudder to accomplish coordinated turns. Right after that we have rudder and aileron mix. Here you can mix your rudder to your aileron to accomplish coordinated turns. Next we have rudder elevator mix. Here you can mix your rudder to your elevator. Next we have camber mix. Here we can set all control surfaces to act as flaps. Next we have elevator camber. Here we can mix the elevator to camber. Here we have camber flap to elevator mix. This is to compensate for that nose up you get when you initiate flaps on an aircraft. Here you can mix in some elevator to compensate for that. Next we have air brake. Here we can assign surfaces to act as air brakes. Next we have snap roll. This feature will allow you to initiate a snap roll with the flick of a switch. Here we have elevator. Here we can mix in the elevator to act as ailerons. This comes in useful when setting up jets. And last we have EX Mixer. Here you can mix any switch to any channel to create any mix you desire. Okay, now I'm going to go over some of the glider menus because there are some new menus under glider. First thing we notice that's different is flight mode. Here we can select different flight modes for your model. We can select how fast we want the flight mode to be initiated and what switch we want to activate it. The next thing we notice that's different is motor curve. Here we can adjust our motor curve and select the switch. Another difference is butterfly. Here we can adjust our butterfly. This basically slows down and speeds up our glider. Here under motor, we can activate and deactivate our motor. And that's it for the differences of the glider. Now we'll go ahead, we'll select a different type of model. Let's select a helicopter. Now we'll go to model menu. Now under helicopter, we have a couple different things. We have flight mode. Here under flight modes, we can select our flight modes and how fast we want them to be initiated. Next, we have pitch curve. Here we can adjust our pitch curves and assign switches for them. And we have a throttle curve. 
Here you can adjust your throttle curve and assign switches as well. Throttle hold. Here you can assign a switch to hold the throttle. We have our throttle cut. Here you can of course assign a switch to cut your throttle. Here we have throttle mix. Here you can mix in some throttle to compensate for elevation loss when turning. Next we have swash. Here you can adjust your swash plate and adjust the rates on it and adjust how sensitive you'd like it. Here we have pitch rudder mix. Here we can mix in some rudder to compensate for torque when pitch is applied. Next we have gyro. Here we can adjust the rate of the gyro for each flight mode. That's it for helicopter. So for multi-rotor mode, there's nothing different except for flight mode. There are two more quick things I'd like to show you. The timer, go ahead and select one of these timers right here. Here you can set whether you want the timer to count down or up. Here you can set the time. Here is where you can select the alarm. Here you can select the sound if you want it to beep or talk to you. This is what initiates the timer. THS means it'll start when the throttle starts. You can also set a reset switch here. And you can set whether you want it to remember it the next time you turn it on or off. There's two quick shortcut keys I'd like to show you here. If you hold down return button, you will get the monitor. This is useful when checking your channels. You could also hold down the telemetry button right here. and You can reset your timers and reset telemetry as well. And that is a basic overview of the FROS system. Mm -hmm.